Hello everybody, this is Dr. Langan, Board Certified Pediatrician Mom of Six Grandma of Two, and we'll be three in September. Today's topic is going out to all of those recent grads from medical school 2024 who are just now, either this past week or this coming week, about to start the most exciting time of their lives. And so you guys, I wanna go over a few things. First of all, it is very normal if you are feeling some imposter syndrome right now. We all did, and so I don't want you to feel that you're the only one thinking, maybe I didn't study hard enough, maybe my board scores were too low. Let me just tell you, if you graduated from medical school, which you would have had to to get into your residency program, if you made it into the residency program that you're now in, you're qualified to be there or you wouldn't have been there. You wouldn't have matched at this institution. You wouldn't have matched in this specialty. You're meant to be there. You're supposed to be there. You were matched there. So you had the required board scores and GPA and everything else. So you are meant to be there, first of all. No one else there in your starting internship class knows all the things yet either. You're in the same boat. No one there expects you to know the intricacies of how your EMR work. I hope if you have Epic that you've used it before because it's a little bit of a bear uh, to go from scratch. That would certainly help out if you had had some experience with that. I think the EMR is one of the most frustrating things when you're very first starting. But you will get the hang of it. It will become like second nature. Second point. If you did a sub-I or an AI, which is a sub-internship or acting internship in your fourth year, which I highly encourage for this very reason that you're feeling right now, remember that you did it. You passed it or you wouldn't have graduated. You can do this and this is going to be most similar to what you did in that AI or sub-I. So remember, you've succeeded before. You finished that sub-I. You will succeed again in this internship. I promise. I promise there are resources in your institution if you're having mental health or physical problems that you need to access if you need that. I also want to give you a little bit of a word of encouragement as far as, I think this is related to the imposter syndrome. A lot of times if a procedure uh, becomes available, for example, maybe you're on an ICU month and you're realizing maybe the blood gases are getting worse with your patient and they're going to need to be intubated. Guys, this is your chance. Volunteer. I'm not saying to be overly aggressive or to be rude, certainly by no means, but this is your chance. Get the procedures that are coming to you because if you don't fight to get them now, somebody else will do them and then you're not going to have the skills you need to increase your confidence and just, you know, your abilities, your clinical abilities. So please be not aggressive, but assertive when it comes to your valid. You are supposed to get all those procedures when you're in doing your uh, residency in the ER, in the ICUs, wherever it may be, on the floor. If a procedure is coming up that you need to have experience doing, I know it's hard and I remember being so, so, so scared, but then once you start doing it, more and more and more, the more comfortable you become. Now, it is possible, you know, I'm 30 years out from where you guys are now, and now if I had to put an art line in a two pound baby, I would probably be a nervous wreck. But I remember not even batting an eye. I did it all the time. I love to do it. There are procedures that you will get very good at, like lumbar punctures in residency. Even if you never have to do them again, this is your time. And you will have to do them again in residency. So go ahead and get some practice so you get confident at it and you get good at it. And then a couple of other things. I hope you know that we from your training medical school are so proud of you and what you're doing. I want you to represent your school well so when people in the classes behind you apply to this very same program that you're in those program directors will look with fondness and kindness on your alma mater so they'll say oh that medical school must have been good because this resident is outstanding we're going to certainly look highly favorably upon other applicants from that same institution so make us proud represent us well please and then another tidbit I will not be disappointed in you if you just simply have forgotten a piece of information. Now, it's rare that anybody's life depends on your exact memorization of the Krebs cycle, but maybe, but it might on the coagulation cascade or the inflammation cascade or all kinds of other things that are tiny little pieces of information that it's hard to remember sometimes. All this information is available. 
you are in a place right now, a learning institution that offers a residency that has a host of experts. I want to tell you one day when you're out in the middle of nowhere, if you choose rural medicine, you won't have that backup. You can't just say, I'll just consult pulmonology. There is no pulmonology. You will be the pulmonologist. I'll just consult genetics. I, I think this kid looks a little syndromic. There is no genetics. You get to decide. Uh, you will be everything if you're in the middle of nowhere. So right now, I know you're overwhelmed. I think you learn more in residency than even in medical school when it comes at you fast. But know that you should try to soak in all these experts and all these backup consults that are available and learn everything you can from them because one day they won't be quite so close by and you have more support there. Like for the intubations we were talking about or the lumbar puncture, somebody can be there, your upper level, your third year, you're attending somebody to walk you through what you're doing or maybe the respiratory therapist is at your right hand side when you're doing your first few intubations and you need a little encouragement, assistance, and even, you know, tips on technically how to get it done and, and where to stop and the chest x-ray to confirm placement and all these things. You're gonna learn so many things. Now, so look up things you don't know, be grateful for the available expertise right at your fingertips. But also, guys, you can look up something you don't know. I'm not going to be disappointed in you if you forgot one tiny tidbit of information. Here's what will make my heart sad. That is, if you miss something on the differential diagnosis because you simply blew off the historian. Maybe it was the mom and you just said, eh, she's nuts. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's exaggerating. And you miss something on that child, I'll be disappointed if it was just because you were calloused or hard-hearted or not listening or not being kind. Please make us proud of you, not only by being smart and hardworking, but by being kind. Listen to the families. Take care of your patients. That's what, that's what matters most. And the other thing is, for all you fine young doctors out there, remember, you may already have a spouse. You at least have parents or siblings or friends. We're all a little bit worried about you. We know this is going to be an intense time whenever you get the chance to just call your mom, text your mom, <laughs> and let her know how you're doing and that you are surviving. You are a human being. Just because you're a doctor now doesn't mean that you can go and go with no sleep or no rest or never a chance to talk to someone else about maybe a tragic code you were a part of, something like that. We now know that we're just human beings. We now know that the residency hours people in my generation worked were stupid. I fell asleep at every stoplight driving home after working 40 hours in a row with no sleep. That's stupid. I'm a human being. I can't do it. Couldn't make great medical decisions with no sleep either. That was not smart. You need rest. Rest when you can. Do what's best for your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, uh, and just take a break every chance you get. But you're going to learn so much. I'm so proud of you. Uh, for the rest of your life, you'll look back on residency as the time you made the closest friends and learned the most about what you'll actually be doing with your career. Best of luck, you guys. We're rooting for you.